everybody, welcome back to our Liberty House. My name is Beth and today I'm gonna to be walking you through our garden. It is the first week in March, so temperatures are starting to get pretty warm during the heat of the day, but still remain pretty cool at night. So it's too early to start our summer plants, but we still have a few of our winter plants in the ground. But I wanna show you what all that looks like as well as some of the pests that we're dealing with this time of year. Um, so let's get going. If you're new to our channel, welcome. And if you have seen some of my garden tours over the winter, welcome back. Um, I always kind of start here on the Western side of our kind of side yard where our garden lies um, and work my way East. And I just go kind of bed by bed and show you what we have going on. This time of year, you can see a lot of my winter plants have started to bolt like this bok choy as well as the Napa cabbage over here. Um, those were just two we hadn't gotten to eat and they started to bolt or go to flower and I just let them go to help feed the bees. And it just adds a lot of great color to our garden this time of year. It's just kind of fun to see kind of the whole life cycle of some of these plants. Also in this bed, you can, um, if you remember from my past videos, I have oregano here in the front and thyme there in the back. Um, this oregano I just gave a haircut to yesterday or the day before, um, and it's drying out inside the house. Um, but it was just starting to take over the bed. I'll throw a little picture of what it was like here. Um, oregano is a great container plant. Um, same with the thyme is kind of taking over. That's my next herb to give a haircut to, um, but they'll really take over. So this is a great time of year um, as you're starting to make room for your summer plants to maybe cut back some of those herbs and make room, um, which is what I did here. Uh, so we'll start planting out some of our summer seeds here probably in the next few weeks. Uh, and then in a month from now, we'll, we'll really be planting. Also in this bed, you can see I have um, a bunch of leeks over on this side. And I also have onions growing over here. And these, both of these plants take quite a while. Um, I planted them many months ago, so they're a few months in with a few months to go before they're really ready to um, be harvested. And then you can see back here, I kind of just have some uh, rogue mustard growing. <laughs> I planted a ton of mustard in this bed um, last year and I think a lot of it just self-seeded and grew over the winter months and I just let go and we'll chop those up for salads and then this time you can see just like based on my hand it's so bright right now um, just how big it is so I'm gonna be giving that a haircut here um, probably this week and start drying some of that out for kitchen use all right, so that's pretty much it for, for this bed here. Um, as we move over to this bed, kind of a lot of the same, to be honest. We have, um, this is a broccoli that really just did not grow over the last few months. It's, I mean, obviously stayed alive. It just didn't um, get very big. And it's not bolting yet, which is kind of surprising. I, I think it's um, kind of in a protected spot from the sun, um, so it doesn't get nearly as much sun as some of the other parts of the bed um, because the peas are shading it out. So I think that's a reason it hasn't bolted. Um, I doubt I'm gonna really get a harvest out of it, but we'll see, I'm just gonna let it go. You can see here's two more Napa cabbages that we did not harvest in time. And I'm just letting them do its thing. It's actually pretty cool to kind of see them open up and put on some flowers. Um, here's another, <laughs> just the theme of today, just to warn you. Um, this is cauliflower that uh, went to bolt. You actually saw this in last month's video, or I guess in January's video, I missed last month. Um, but this went to bolt like super early, um, which you saw in that video, how I kind of covered some of the leaves up on my cauliflower to prevent early bolting. Um, so this, was just kind of an experiment one. I've never seen cauliflower bolt, so I'm just kind of letting it go and seeing what happens. And then over here are some more leeks I planted. Um, these are doing really, really well. 
And then on this wall, you can see our, all of our peas from the winter months. They're doing still pretty good uh, in early March this year. There's a ton to be harvested. Uh, we need to probably do that here soon because you can actually start to see some of them are starting to like kind of go to the drying out phase, um, which is just natural and they're not quite as good to eat. So it's a good time um, to harvest what you can because I think at least in our zone, the, the rest of the growing season on these peas is going to be pretty short, especially if the weather stays warm like it has been. And you can see another sign of just kind of the, their season ending is this powdery mildew that's pretty inevitable with peas. You can slow the process of powdery mildew down with a treatment of neem oil, uh, which I have used once, but I think right now it's just kind of working its course. We'll probably harvest these, um, harvest what we can. Uh, like these are perfect size right now. Um, and just, just kind of let it go, but probably be pulling pulling the peas out of this bed here um, probably this month sometime. You can see in our gutters, I don't have a much planted, but I do have um, rosemary, some trailing rosemary in here that's flowering and nice and pretty. And then back here in this box, I just want to show you, we have some kale, um, and this is a flower. I forget which one it is offhand, um, but you can see what we are starting to deal with is aphids. And I shouldn't say starting to, these guys have crept in and ha been hanging out for many weeks, really like in February, middle of February, they started. Can you see all those aphids <laughs> on my kale? Um, that's going to be today's second theme. I'm going to be showing you a lot of aphids here and there. Um, aphids can be tricky little buggers. You can um, combat them in a few different ways, but sometimes it's just that time of year. Um, and this is definitely the time of year where aphids just thrive. I'll show you over here in this next bed, the um, Brussels sprouts are also covered like completely covered in aphids. It's pretty gnarly. Um, and these Brussels sprouts have just started to suffer from it. You can see um, aphids kind of suck the juice out of a plant. I don't know if there's a better way to describe it, but the um, untreated, they will kill your plant. Um, and you can see I've been trying to spray them with neem oil to combat them. I've done a couple treatments. I haven't been super consistent with my neem oil spraying. Um, and then, which is maybe why, you know, they're still here. But I also think these plants just need to get cut out and tossed in the green waste because I don't think they're, they're going to survive much longer. I was hoping to harvest those Brussels. They're pretty small. Um, I know if you do have a plant with aphids or any other pests, I've heard you can throw, if you cut the, the plant out and throw it into a bucket of salt water, the bugs or the pests will fall off. Um, so if you did have, you know, Brussels, I could throw this into a, that bucket and, and maybe still eat some of those cleanly, but honestly, they're not that big. So I think we're, we're just going to chalk these Brussels up to a didn't work out this year, maybe next year. And then also in this bed is the broccoli. We harvested this head um, and then shot some side shoots out, uh, which I had every intention to harvest. This one's still relatively um, intact, but um, yeah, I'm just kind of letting this go to flower too. Feed some of those bees a little bit. And then before it really goes to seed, I'll, I'll chop it out and cl start clearing out this bed for, for summer. And then also in this bed, I'll just point out, I still do have um, some chamomile growing, the fennel, or um, sorry, this is not fennel, this is dill, is still growing uh, really well. And then over here, I have some cauliflower that really didn't do much. This side of the bed really doesn't get a ton of sun in the winter months. 
Um, so I think they just probably didn't get enough light. And this one here is starting to become victim of the aphids too. So I'm, I'm thinking that these guys are probably not gonna produce anything um, this season either. And you can see over here, um, this is where I had planted some things. I have dill that germinated right here. Poppies, I haven't seen the poppies come up, which is pretty surprising. Um, I might try to reseed those and see what happens. And then I did plant a dahlia tuber here. My first year growing dahlias, so wish me the best. <laughs> and then in this, I do have some cilantro and some flowers. That's a mum from last year. Um, so just kind of letting that hang out. And then we can move on. So some other like great flowers this time of year is ronculus. Love ronculus. It's a great container plant with gorgeous blooms. The um, clysamin, I think that's how you say it, uh, which is the same as that red one over there you just saw. I have that in a couple spots and that's a perennial. So it comes back every year if you let it. Um, it just flowers only in the cooler season. And then this bed, here's our garlic bed. And we do have onions um, down the center and then elephant garlic on both sides. So the elephant garlic variety is the largest or one of the largest garlic varieties. So um, the stalks do get pretty thick um, and you can see the onion sets here are starting to really look nice and mature, uh, which is fabulous. We have um, been subtly fertilizing this bed every month. Um, we do have some kind of oddball garlics that um, just aren't that big, but we'll see what happens. It's still early. There's still a lot of time for them. Uh, we probably won't be harvesting any of the garlic or the onions until close to June this year. And um, you can kind of see these little guys this, I believe, is larkspur. I tried planting larkspur here last year and it never germinated or came up, um, but I swear that's what this is. So it's kind of fun to see that um, come back, even though it's a little late to the party. And then we'll just keep moving down. I have um, more onions. So the, I don't know if you've ever bought onion sets. They come in this huge package and there's a ton. Um, so my extras, I just planted in this pot mostly to use as like the onion tops. So we've been cooking with some of these. It's a great like cut and come again. And that way I, I don't have to use the onion tops from the onions I plan to harvest the bulbs from, but honestly, like they're looking pretty good. Um, they're doing a lot better in this pot than I anticipated. And then, now we have the, the four tree boxes, we call them. And in this first tree box, we have some kale. This kale has been one of my favorite things to grow over the cool season this year. Um, it's starting to, like everything else, become victim of the aphids. If I can get a good shot for you there, you can see them. Um, and you can see this one here is actually starting to to flower. So really once they start to flower, the leaves do become a little bit more bitter, but we'll see. I might try it and see if it's um, still good to eat or not, and then just wash off any aphids that I might find. But I'm thinking these are just ending their season. I mean, they've been planted in the ground for many months. Um, so just kind of the name of the game this time of year as seasons are changing. In the next tree box, um, probably since the last video I showed you guys, we have since planted some red potatoes in here. Um, so that's really exciting. You can see we have not set in our, we need to change our irrigation, so don't judge us. Um, we have these cool um, tree stakes that you've seen in one of our past videos, um, but we just need to hook up the irrigation to the two to get um, deep watering happening, which is really great for any sort of raised bed or any sort of plant growth. Um, but yeah, we planted potatoes, long story short, in there. In here, we have some beets that are actually starting to 
like glow up. I think they've been really enjoying the, the warmer days here. And I did plant a couple tulips in here too. I have one that's, oh, two that's um, starting to come up, which is great. I'm gonna take these out. I think they're, oh, this one's still current. This one is not. And then this one's empty currently, um, but it's, it looks empty, but it's not empty. It has our um, Jerusalem artichokes in there. Um, so in the next, um, well, as the temperature keeps getting warmer, the Jerusalem artichokes that are in there are kind of like potatoes, so they'll just keep growing. Um, we've been harvesting just out of the dirt um, because the soil and the cool temps out here keep it from rotting. Um, and then as we keep going, uh, we have our blueberries in here, which are starting to flower and do pretty well. We currently have our two blueberry plants in um, pots, but we keep talking about transferring them into the ground. So we may be doing that this month, maybe not. We've been saying that for like over a year and <laughs> haven't so. And then uh, you'll see these beautiful yellow flowers over here. These are actually flowers from uh, broccoli rob that we planted over here um, that again bolted, went to went to seed. We kind of left them because the, the yellow is just a nice color in the garden right now. But this week, especially you can see the aphids have taken over. So it might be time soon to kind of clear, clear it out and um, the bees are have a lot more to eat now. I don't need to worry so much about letting them eat my, um, or worried about that they don't have enough food. So I think um, they'll be okay and then I can hopefully mitigate aphids. Um, I'm hoping to like eradicate them prior to planting all my starts out. So um, we have a few weeks yet, but um, I'm thinking it's time. Just look at them all. And then back here in our U-shaped bed, um, you saw in a video I posted a couple weeks ago about 10 things to plant in February. Um, I planted a lot back here and I just want to follow up with you guys on it. So um, one of the things I planted was spinach and you can see we have great germination on that spinach that we planted about a month ago. Uh, radishes also have done really, really well. I actually need to kind of go in and, and probably thin these. It's about time to make sure the bulbs get nice and big. You don't want them to be too crowded. Uh, and then I also planted two rows of carrots and you can see the carrots have also germinated, which is fantastic. They're a little bit too small to thin just yet. Sorry, there's a lot of shadows today. Um, but as they get a little bit bigger, I'll go through and thin these as well. Um, just to make sure, just like the radishes, any root vegetable, you don't want them to be overcrowded. So they get nice and big. I also planted some rainbow shard, which hasn't germinated nearly as well. I think of the three spots I planted, only one spot germinated, uh, at least so far. Um, I think I'm gonna re reseed some of these um, and just see what happens. I also planted a row of fava beans, which are looking pretty good. Pretty good germination here. And then I also planted some mustard, which took a, a lot longer to germinate than I thought, but I'm getting there. They're starting to come up. And then over on this side again, this kind of next to the fence part of our yard, especially in the winter because the sun is so far that way, um, it gets really shaded out. So we don't plant a ton over here in the winter months, but I do have um, some uh, flowers. This is nigella flower. It hasn't flowered yet, but uh, it's looking okay. And then some borage that's doing really well. Another great one for the bees. And then down in these pots, more ronculus. And then some catnip back there. And then a random pidiosporum that I just threw in there because it's dying in my house, so. 
All right, I got a couple more things I wanna show you. I'll just give you an update on our compost. So one side we shut off, that's the side. Lucas actually just turned it today to give it some good aeration. This is the side we're currently adding to. Um, so that's just kind of in the middle of its life. Lot, lot, to, lot of time yet for this um, side of the compost. Uh, I'll take a pit stop here on our potting bench table um, to show you. So we had, um, if you remember, in one of the beds up front, I had some chives planted, uh, just a nice herb, and it was kind of dying. It didn't look very healthy. So I tried something new where I pulled the plant up and separated it um, because their roots tend to get really root bound and kind of it suffocates itself. So um, I separated it and so far so good. I just, I didn't have room to plant all of these in the garden itself. Um, so I have a couple, I was just kind of waiting to make sure that they stayed alive and I might gift them. Um, but in the garden, I actually planted them back here in our onion bed, um, two different spots back there. So we should hopefully see if those stay alive and keep giving me some good chives. And then I'll just walk through the garden real quick, or the yard. Um, rosemary, we have the herb right here. It's really starting to get big. I actually cut it pretty aggressively the other day, the same day I did the oregano, um, but it's still pretty large. Rosemary grows so well in the Sacramento Valley because it's really drought tolerant. Um, but yeah, I harvested a bunch. It's gonna dry like the rest. And then the roses, so you know I have two rose bushes, which we chopped back in January. They are doing just fine. They're right on schedule. And then I have um, two climbing roses, um, which are also really starting to come to life here. I don't see any bloom heads started, but definitely a lot of leaves and foliage growth, which is fantastic. Um, one thing to just keep an eye on if you have roses is to just check for aphids. Um, I don't see any, but aphids really love um, new growth, especially new leaves. And I've had problems with them in the past on my roses, but I think <laughs> there's just so much else for them to eat in the garden. They, or, you know, infestate they haven't attacked these roses, but I have a feeling as I start to remove a lot of those um, plants that have the aphid infestations, the aphids might pick up and move. So it's just a good time to check because, you know, roses are just starting to grow. So you don't want those aphids, aphids to take over these plants and kind of add any stress to them. So just a friendly reminder there. Another herb I have growing is some lemon balm. So this I gave a good whack um, in the fall. Uh, and you can see kind of some of the, the spots where I, I cut the last year's growth and it's just starting to fill in with new. This is a great time, these new baby leaves. This is the best time I think to harvest lemon balm because as they get older, they just don't get quite as good and then they get kind of eaten up by bugs and things. Um, but I have a really good lemon balm cookie recipe on my blog. If you want to check it out, I'll put a link below. Um, it's a really good like, like morning cookie. It's like not too sweet. And then we have nasturtium here. This thing is growing wild. It's, uh, we threw some seeds down a couple years ago and it just loves this spot. Um, this spot notoriously is just really nice because it gets morning sun and afternoon shade. Um, but just keep an eye on your nasturtium because mine had started to grow like all the way behind this bed and it was pretty wild. I had just cut all of it out because uh, it was just oh, getting a little bit too overgrown. But nasturtium, you can eat both the leaves and the flowers, if you didn't know. They're pretty good on salads. but another one. I've had pretty big aphid infestations on my nasturtium in the past too. If you guys remember, or if you follow us on Instagram, I had 
like a whole like feeding ground of aphids here last year but we got a lot of ladybugs and soldier beetles uh, which was super fun to see kind of the whole life cycle a uh, little ecosystem happening in our yard and then here's our final garden bed it's kind of like in a random side yard of our house we put one here last year because this just gets great winter sun great sun in the summer too um but we planted quite a few things here i actually cleaned a lot of it out i think since you guys have seen it last we have borage that was literally taking over this whole bed so i cut a lot of that back i left some um, on the side of the bed but just look how big this thing is isn't that insane it's like literally bigger than my wrist the stalk of this borage here's the one that i cut because it was just like taking over um but anyways in this bed i have um i think this is a cauliflower um i don't think this is gonna i think it's just too late for it to really give me a cauliflower so um i just left it in here because i don't have anything else to plant right now i'm just in that waiting period until we can start planting out our summer crops and things in the ground are good for the soil so if you um have some time i encourage you just leave what you have in there let it go to seed and bolt um and just you know cut it out before it totally seeds and self seeds because you don't want that mess but it is just fun to watch um things go through its whole life cycle and then you're feeding all the beneficial insects too so it's just kind of a great um great thing to do in your garden this is a brussels sprout that didn't give us anything you can see the little tiny baby things um just wasn't a good year for brussels sprouts for us but that's okay um here in the back i have some carrots that we planted quite a while ago i started to thin them i didn't do a great job thinning them i should try a little bit harder but we'll see and then up front there's more onions we're gonna have so many onions this year it's insane um but yeah i have a few more onions kind of hanging out these were really shaded out from that borage. They're not quite as big as some of the, the other spots in our yard. But that's pretty much it for what's growing over here. You can see the passion fruit. Um, that's kind of taking over this wall. It suffered from a bit of frost damage. You can still see you know, some of the leaves up there that were damaged from um, some hard frost we got. Uh, you can see, see, I still have the step stool out because I was up there kind of deadheading, you could say, or just cutting some of the bad damaged leaves off. Uh, I didn't want to cut too many off because I want, didn't want to hurt the plant, but, but I wanted to also encourage some new growth too. So we'll see how it recovers. All right, and then the last thing I'm going to show you guys are just give you an update on our last um, two trees. We have Alfonso, the Mexicola avocado tree. He's looking so good this time of year. Uh, we planted him three seasons ago, so three years, and we have a ton of these like flowers on here. So I'm curious um, what's going to happen. We haven't gotten any fruit from him yet, but I know it takes a few years. Um, so we'll see. He's just, he's looking really good. Not going to lie. We have a fig tree hiding here in the back. We really need to put this in the ground. I think I've said that the last like two or three garden tours. So you guys should just hold me accountable for that. And then over here we have Leonardo. He's our lime tree. Um, he's suffered a bit from some leaf miner damage. That's why he's looking a little thin on some of these top, top branches, but I mean, overall, he's doing really, really well. We fertilized our citrus trees a few weeks ago. So if you haven't done that yet, it's a great time of year um, to throw some fertilizer down for them as they start to put out some of their springtime growth. And that's really it for the garden tour in March. We are kind of in this spot where we're waiting about another month probably until we start planting out some of our spring or our summer um, 
plants like tomatoes and peppers and things. Um, the soil temps are just still a little bit too low for them to flourish outside. Even though temps, they are sustainable, um, it's better for the tomato and the pepper to not be stunted. You put them into like cold water basically um, and they're, they just don't like to grow in that temperature. Um, so if you haven't been following along, subscribe to our channel. We've been doing a ton of seed updates on um, what we have started inside in our greenhouse. Um, and if you're new to seed starting, um, it's a really basic setup. It didn't cost us a lot of money. It's our like third year using this method and it's done really well for us. Um, not to say we're not gonna upgrade in the future, but as a beginner seed starter, um, it's a pretty sweet uh, setup if I say so myself. Um, and we have a lot planted and we're planting a lot more here probably this week. So be sure to head over to our channel and catch up on our seed starting videos um, and stay tuned. We have a lot of content coming towards you in the next few weeks and throughout the summer um, about just how we garden here in our backyard um, and kind of learn with us as we go. Um, it's been a lot of fun to have you guys here. So thank you and um, I'll see you guys next week. You wanna say hi? Oh, you wanna say hi? You just want me to throw this bumper, huh? Yeah, okay. She just goes straight to lay down. <laughs>